it's you. I thought you weren't coming. I was followed. There's so many roses in the streets nowadays, you can't put a pin between them. Oh. Anyone see you come in? No. Don't think so. Go in there. I want to talk to you. Okay. Hungry, Jenkins? No, I'm not hungry. Well, I am. What did you want to talk to me about? All in good time, Jenkins. I'd like talking on an empty stomach. I'll take that. I want some dough this time, Langford. Not promises. Taking a big risk, you know, bringing your food here day after day. What do you mean, a big risk? I know the Rosses are after you. How do you know? It's obvious, isn't it? Man, it never shows his face in the daytime. Has his food brought in? For all I know, you might be an escaped murderer. Maybe I am. Well, don't worry, Jenkins. I've got my reasons for laying up, but they needn't worry you. I'll wait here a minute, and I'll see if I can raise some brass. All right? I'll wait. Inspector Thornton here. Who? Oh, yes? You found Jenkins? Well, what happened? I'm afraid I lost him, sir. I got on his tail at Piccadilly and followed him as far as Shepherd's Market. Then he gave me the slip down a side turning. All right, Reynolds, you may pick him up later on. I shall be at the Industrial Club tonight. If you want me, you can get me there between half past nine and eleven. Very good. Well, Johnny, the man we're looking for is a killer. A criminal maniac with half a dozen aliases. Sinclair, Forrest, Johnson, Richardson, Pinner, Langford. Langford, eh? And his real name is Pendycast. He's the fellow who escaped from the asylum about three months ago, isn't he? That's right. The Pendycast murder was before your time, wasn't it, Johnny? How many years ago was that? About ten. Pendycast and a fellow named O'Gorman broke into a house at Hampstead Heath. As a matter of fact, the owner's a friend of mine. While they were own sacking one of the rooms, they were disturbed by a servant. One of them shot her. Pendicost turned King's evidence and O'Gorman was hanged. Later, Pendicost was found to be insane and was sent up to Broadmoor. This was taken a few months before his escape. I'd like a front page spread with a full description. Looks a nasty piece of work. Beats me how a man like that can remain at large for so long. It's a remarkable thing that a man like that can always find someone to look after him. Someone who is quite unaware of his real identity. Have you a lead on him, Inspector? Yes, I think we have. Last month, two houses were burgled in Pite Street. And on the same evening in both cases, a man was found shot in that neighbourhood. Fingerprints proved that these men were the ones taking part in the burglaries. You think our man had something to do with it? He usually works alone. But sometimes he gets some down and out to help him. Then if a difference of opinion arises, Pendicast settles it with a gun. I must introduce him to my editor. <laughs> what makes you think it was Pendicast? Because in the second incident, they were disturbed by the caretaker. Pendicast must have been off his guard because the caretaker described him perfectly. But at the moment, we want to keep that to ourselves. All right, Inspector. Morning. Morning. I'll see the news, Ed, about the photograph. Thanks, Johnny. Any luck, Inspector? No, not so far. I think Jenkins knows that we're tailing him. He's a pretty fly customer, young Jenkins. Hmm. Why don't we pick him up? Because I think he's more useful to us outside. Reynolds says that he's supplying Pendicost with food. Would Jenkins be surprised if he knew who he was supplying? <laughs> there he is. Who? Oh? Oh, Roger, yes? Look, I saw that chap again early this morning. Oh, don't you worry about that. Well, I am worried. I'll send one of my men along. I couldn't recognize him. He was too far away. But he's watching this house. I'm absolutely certain of it. I'll pick you up at night. Now, don't you worry. But That was Trent. He sounds a bit jittery. He thinks he's had a watch. I think the Pentecost is planning a return visit. Trent's had that at the back of his mind ever since the escape. Personally, I think the idea that murderers return to the scene of their crime is just pure fallacy. In my experience, they keep as far away as possible. Yes, unless... 
Unless what? Morbid fascination, perhaps. I suppose Trent has been persuaded to bank those rubies of his. Oh, they're safe enough. Safer than Trent is, perhaps. Standing. Yes? It might be as well to post a man on duty in the grounds of Trent's house, just in case. Routine precaution, eh? Mm-hmm. I'll put Roberts on duty. I think he's in the canteen. You know, the one I'm really worried about at the moment is young Jenkins. What kept you? What's up, Jenkins? You look nervous. Nervous? Why should I be nervous? Maybe he was just anxious. What is about the money? Give us a light. Maybe I was. It's too bad, because I'm afraid you'll have to go on worrying about it. Can't raise a breath for the next couple of days. Still, I've got an idea, if you're really short. Well? How'd you like to help me earn it? What do you mean? What I say. Help me earn some brass. I'd like to give you a chance to pick up some easy money. Just to show how grateful I am to you for what you've done for me. I'll buy it. I'm serious, Jenkins. I just happen to know where there's a nice piece of change waiting for us. What about the nice piece of risk? I reckon I've taken enough for you, Langford. And if the truth was known, I'll be taking this one for yourself. You've got to take risks if you want to get on. You don't want to be a failure all your life, do you? Or do you? Wouldn't mind staying free for a change. You'll stay free, all right. Don't worry about that. Look at me. I've stayed free and I've been going strong for 20 years. And they say crime don't pay. It's like everything else, Jenkins. It pays as long as you get away with it. What do you want me to do? Help me pull a job. I got landed the last time. That wasn't with me. I don't go for the small time stuff. It's too chancy. If you want to throw in with me, I'll put you onto something big. Something planned and scientific. You'll run a small risk, of course you will. I'll be wrong to tell you different. Wouldn't believe you if you did. Now, why don't you get to the point? You want me to help Buster Crib? Well, what's it all about? What's the divvy? Shall we say 60-40? Or shall we say 50-50? All right, Jenkins, 50-50. I'm taking the same risk as you are, yes, you know. Of course you are. I've got two conditions. What's that? I don't want no blind alleys. I want to know the job, see? The risk and everything. Of course. We're partners on an equal footing. What else? That gun of yours. Well? I don't like fireworks. Of course you don't. I don't like them either. I never use the gun. Just leave it in my pocket and show it if I have to. Satisfied? Okay. All right, now listen. I'm on something that's red hot. Overlooking Hampstead Heath, there's a house called Twelve Trees. Now, here's where it is. Now, there's the house. Plenty of cover all the way around it. Just ease our way around to the back and then on it. Come in. Yes, Mrs. Midge? I just looked in to see if there was anything you wanted before I go out, sir. No, there's nothing I want, thank you. I'm popping over to see Clara, Mrs. Conroy's maid, sir. Terrible legs that poor girl's got. Hmm? I can't say I've noticed them. You ought to feel them. Ah, oh, the knotty they are. Radica Spain, sir. Oh. Well, thanks for looking in, Mrs. Mitch. I'm going to see my niece a bit later. She gets proper lonely with her husband on night. Not very nice to be on your own in her condition, is it, sir? Well, I can't speak from experience, of course, but I've no doubt she'll be very glad to see you. Yes, sir. Of course, good old twelve piece is enough to give you the ump when you're on your own. Especially after... Well, you know. I know how you must feel sitting here all by yourself with that horrible thing at large. Will you be going to the later on, sir? Yes, Inspector Thornton is picking me up in his car. Oh, well, I'll be popping along then. You won't forget to lock up, will you, sir? I've done the back. All right, Mrs. Ridge. Good night. Good night, sir. Mr. Trent, sir? Yes? What time's the Inspector coming for you? About nine o'clock. Why? Oh, nothing, sir. Only I... Well, the fact is, I don't feel right about you being in the house all alone. Oh, if you're worrying about... I don't think he's likely to pay 12 trees another visit. At least I hope not. The police are well on this track this time. Yes, sir. Well, they can't catch him quick enough for me. When I think of that poor thing lying on this very carpet shot in her prime, it makes me boil. 
Well, run along and see your niece, Mrs. Mitch, and don't worry. No, sir. I suppose you've heard about that Cliff House murder in the news of the Globe, sir? No, I haven't. Mm, it was a nice idea to do, if you like. Premeditated, they say. Only seeing you sitting here on your own put me in mind of it. Why? What happened? It's the master of the house, you see, sir. He gave the servants the night off. Settled down all by himself to read, just like you, sir. Mm. In the morning, they found him with his throat cut from ear to ear. Well, there you are, sir. Of course, I don't want to alarm anyone, but it only goes to show you can't be too careful, can you? That shutter bolted. I'm not sure. I'll see. Not that it makes much difference. I mean, if he is lurking about outside, the shutter won't stop him coming through, will it? Mrs. Midge. Yes, sir. Has Vera gone out? Oh, yes, sir. Vera's gone out. Probably to get about she is, but she'll be back quite soon now. Shutter's all right now, sir. Yes, yeah, she usually pops along to the pictures on Thursdays. Tonight she's gone to see crime. It's all about them Edinburgh body snatchers. They were a nice couple. Murdered 16 people, they say. And you know, it's a funny coincidence, sir, but one of them got let off light in the same way that that man Pentecost got off. I read all about it in every body. Do you mean he turned King's evidence? That's right, sir. Turned against his own partner. Oh, well. Good night, sir. Good night, Mrs. Midge. of a series of talks by your radio detective. Last week, I made a special appeal to householders to assist the police by bearing in mind some routine precautions against burglary. Tonight, I want to tell you how the modern burglar works. you, Vera? My phone's out of order. What is your number, please? Hampstead 3033. I'll report to the engineer, sir. Thank you. Sorry I'm late, Roger. I'm glad to see you. Come on in. Shh. All right, keep down.
coming to the club, aren't you, Roger? Yes, of course. Good luck. Cheers. Thanks. What's on your mind? John? Mm-hmm? Did you post the man in the grounds? I did. Is he still there? Of course he is. Why? Because I have a feeling he may be wanted tonight. Oh, now what makes you think that? I've got a presentiment. About Pentecost? Yes. I see. You know where he is? No, I'm afraid I don't. If I did, you'd have nothing to worry about, would you? Oh, then you'll admit I've got something to worry about. No. No, not really. John, why don't you tell me the truth? Because there's nothing to tell, Roger. There's no logical reason why Pentecost should come back here, and if he does, we can take care of him. He's no more dangerous to you than to anybody else. So let's forget about him. I suppose you haven't forgotten that he broke into this house and committed a murder, and that my evidence nearly got him hanged. Doesn't it occur to you he might come back here to take a pot at me? We've been over all this before, haven't we? Oh, yes, of course, to you it's just another case. But to me, it's something that's preyed on my mind for years. And tonight... Tonight you've got a bad attack on the jitters. If you put yourself in my position... Now, listen, old man. I've been tracking down criminals all my life. That's my job. If I was to start worrying about what they were going to do to me once they got out of prison, I should go bar me. Now, let's go. John. Mm hmm Haven't you ever had a feeling about something? Like a warning? Yes, I suppose I have sometimes. Well, I had one before you came in, and it wasn't a case of jitters. I know that what I've been afraid of so long is going to happen. It was as though somebody was trying to convey the idea to me. And then just before you arrived, the telephone rang. I lifted the receiver, but they rang off. Well, that often happens. Somebody dials a number, hears a strange voice, and then rings off without bothering to apologize. And it's also a trick that burglars use to see if there's anyone in the house. Roger. Mm -hmm. Let me do the worrying, will you? I'm quite good at it. I know you think I'm just a boneheaded policeman, but believe me, I'm quite aware that a fellow like Pentecost will do the most unpredictable things and turn up in the most unexpected places. We can't cover all the places he's most likely to turn up in, but we can cover the most probable ones. So for your own peace of mind, I've gone a step further and put a man on duty in the grounds. I wish you wouldn't make it sound as if you're humoring me. Well, that's what it amounts to. You know, Roger, part of our work is, is a matter of luck. But strangely enough, it seems to turn out all right in the end. Our man generally gets caught in the net in some unpredictable way. That's not very reassuring to me. Well, anyway, let's get along to the club. Right you are. He's not dead, is it? He might be. I didn't stop to feel his pulse. You're taking the same as me, Jenkins. That's what you wanted. 50-50. That goes for everything. Now tie him up. Keep a lookout. Okay. Sure they'll be back for two hours? I've been watching the crib for three weeks. The train goes to the club every Thursday night at the same time. Never varies. Leaves at nine, gets back at eleven. What about the surf? I told you, he gives them the night off. Yeah, but if one comes back... We'll take care of that. Now shut up. Get your torch.
There's that door. What's the matter with you? Just what I had to. Look, your pool, the house is empty. Look, I don't like this. There's something there. What? Let's get out of here. What the devil's the matter with you? Keep your nerve. Industrial Club? Has Inspector Thornton arrived yet? Not yet. When he does, will you ask him to ring his office? That's right. Thank you. You uh, seem to know your way around. Yeah, that's my job. How do you know it was in here? Instinct. I can smell these things a mile away. Shh. What's that? Nothing. Could have sworn I heard something. Yeah, if you're going to act like this, you're no good to me. Pull yourself together or get out and leave me to it. I'm not disturbing you. All right, keep away from that door. One squeak out of you and... I don't squeak. Where have you come from? Yes. Well, cut it out. Are you the housemaid? I might be. What are you getting excited for? I'm not getting excited. Exactly. I won't bite you. Don't seem to have got very far. It's holding you up. You're pretty cool, aren't you? You're the ones that are scared. Don't kid yourself. Why don't you be a good boy and put that nasty thing away? Okay. If you're going to behave yourself, there won't be any need for it. Just stay where you are, I'll keep your mouth shut, and everything will be all right. Good. Well? 
was all right, I thought I... What? Nothing. Keep an eye on her. Keep your mind on your work. Well, what do you think I'm doing? He doesn't mean homework, Ducky. Now, this looks interesting. It's all right. I shan't call the police. Just carry on as if I wasn't here. You wouldn't off ever try if you had the chance, though, wouldn't you? I can't, anyway. The phone's out of order. You can receive calls, but you can't make them. Nuisance, isn't it? The times I've complained about that phone. How long are you going to be? I'll have it open in no time. You hope. That's the dart. I often wonder what old man Trent keeps in there. Proper secretive, he is. You'll find out before long. Think so? Sure. There isn't a safe in the world I can't crack. Time's getting on, Langford. That's okay. We've run over an hour. How do you know? Don't ask questions. Oh, come on, be sporty. It's my job to know. Ever get caught? No, never. Mom. Isn't that what I'd like to do if I was a man? Lie in bed all day and break into houses at night. Must be a lovely life. So peaceful. During the day. Still. One never knows, does one? Never knows what? What's waiting round the corner? No one knows. <laughs> Good thing, in a way. If we knew what was coming to us, I think some of us would bump ourselves off. Would you like to keep quiet a minute? Who ever met a woman who'd like to keep quiet as long as that? That's what I call real self-control. <laughs> Not making much progress, are we? I don't trust her. Lummy, I ask a civil question as calm as you please to say you don't trust me. Keep your voice down. Chant. Don't get windy. I won't shock you. Have you onions in your game? You being funny? Of course not. Well, you thought it was time you knocked off for a cup of tea. Don't want the shop stirred down on you. Did you know we was in here? Yes. I knew. Was you talking outside? About sharp ears. Why didn't you do a bunk for the cops when you had the chance? Why should I? I'm social, I believe, in equal rights. I thought to myself, old Trent's got plenty and the boys probably ain't got enough. See? What made you come in tonight to pay us a visit? Well? Because I thought I'd chosen the servant's night off. That's for thought, dear. Well, I didn't expect a talkative little piece like you to contend with. Anyway, you don't seem to be worried in your head about Trent. Of course not. I got more important things to think about. Any luck yet? Well, it's tougher than I thought. <laughs> you ask me that, thing's beginning to make you two jump me. Hey, Jenkins, I think we're on our way. About time. Not all rail cracksmen carried a blowpipe. Keep an eye on the skivvy. Give me these days. Lady, help if you please. All right, stop fidgeting, can't you? That safe is beginning to make you too jumpy. Couple of blinking amateurs, that's what you are. I'd rather see it done at the pictures. Here she comes. Now, give us a hand. If you're looking for old man Trent's rubies, I could have told you he put them in the bank years ago. Why, you? Just after you went to the asylum. <laughs> All that to do for a bit of newspaper. If you could see your faces. You little... Now, wait a minute, Mr. Clever Langford. Let go. No good taking it out on her. Let's get out while we can. If you can. What's that? Take a look at the headline on that newspaper. Oh. Take a look at it. 
Pentecost turns kings everywhere. How do you like that, Mr. Pentecost? Pentecost? That's his name. There's not much goes on, I don't know. I get quite a kick nosing round. Helps to fill in the time. Somehow I knew you'd come back if I waited long enough. What do you mean? I'll give you three guesses. But one guess will be enough in a couple of seconds. Well, I never saw two men so scared of one girl. And I thought you were tough. Not getting empty-handed, are you? What about all the silver lying around? You'll never get another chance like this. Never. You were lucky the last time, Mr. Pendercott. But now... Stop her! There's your chance, gone! Jenkins, where's your torch? I don't know. Let's get out of here. Door's locked. <laughs> you want the key I've got. <laughs> Jenkins. Jenkins. Oh! Jenkins. <laughs> 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 now we can all have a night. Come. except Mr. Jenkins. Doesn't he look bad? You don't look too good either, if you don't mind my saying so. You look as though you'd seen a ghost. You're a rotten shot, Mr. Pendleton. You were so much better the last time. Remember. You're coming with me. She's gone. I didn't mean to kill him. I tell you what, I didn't. It was her. What are you talking about? The girl. The girl was here. You've done a good job on Mr. Jenkins, whoever the girl was. She was here, I tell you. The servant. The servant? And where is she now? She's vanished. Oh, into thin air, I yes, suppose. Yes, Let me go. I, I've got to get out of here. Yes, you're coming with me. I didn't do it. I tell you, I didn't. Then, let me... I tell you, I saw her. She was standing here by the door. I tell you, she... Take him away. Right, I saw her. It's a good thing you telephoned. You better try and find Robert. Something must have happened to him. Very good, sir. Well, our friend can't very well blame his accomplice this time. You know, Roger, there may be something in presentiments after all. Yes. What do you mean, yes? Well, that girl he was raving about. I was wondering... Wondering what? Well, I suppose it couldn't have been Vera, my housemaid. More likely our friend's imagination. I wonder. Come in. Well, good evening, sir. I seem to have missed a bit of excitement. Have you just come in, Vera? Yes, sir. Strikes me as just as well I have. I quite agree. That seems to clear up that point. Hmm. Now I'd like to use your telephone. Well, I don't think you can. It's been out of order lately. You can receive calls, but you can't make them. The times I've complained about that phone. Mm. 